You're welcome in this place, Lord. You're welcome in my life, Lord. You're not just welcome, but you're required. And everybody said, I don't know about you, but I don't know how anybody gets up and goes to town without the Holy Spirit. I'll be honest with you, I don't know how you make it through the day with your children and your family without the Holy Spirit. And the church said, amen and amen. Welcome on this beautiful Labor Day weekend at Life Spring. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to take just a moment of our time to welcome all of our online viewers. Come on, church. Our visitors. We'd like to say thank you for joining us here at Live Spring. Uh, it's amazing. You know, I never dreamed. I've always said I got the voice for television, but I don't have the face for television. The other day, I saw where we were being watched in Switzerland, Denmark, Africa. I love it. I know what it is. They said, y'all, come here. Come here. Listen to this redneck right here. <laughs> Can you understand anything he's saying? <laughs> I don't know. We might not be able to understand him. But whatever it is, there's something on it. <laughs> Amen. So, so, you know, the Internet is a, an, an awesome opportunity to expand the gospel. Amen. So I'm asking all of you as we as we're going live now, we're live streaming, we're we're doing that. Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all all for showing up today. Uh, when you get a chance, share on Facebook. Send it out to all your friends. Invite your friends to to like our page because then you get all the notifications of what we're doing. Amen. You can join us on YouTube. Um, Man, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like watching myself. Y'all, how many in here like hearing yourself on a, on a recording? You ought to watch yourself. That's what I really look like? Oh, Lord, help me. <sighs> Man, I've been, God has spoke real, real strong to me this morning, and I, I got a word for somebody. Might as well look at your neighbor and say, it's for me. I do because I know we're we're living in a time right now to where the the prophecy is unfolding before us. Amen. There's no doubt in my mind. I, I've been hearing it, hearing it, hearing it, boy. I mean, uh, the end time is coming, and and so on and so forth. Can I tell you something? Uh, I'm even asked the question, are you pre-tribulationists or are you post-tribulationists? I, I don't know. The Bible's not clear. I can't tell you yea or nay. It's, there is no clarity there. He doesn't want us to know because he said that no man shall know the moment nor the hour. Just be watching for my coming. So if, he, if it were for a post, if, if we have to go through the tribulation, y'all, it's okay. Because he's going to give us grace and mercy to get through. And the church said... Amen. But I'll be honest with you. I want to be on that first boat load out. I want a little hang time. So I, there's a few people I like to say, see, I told you. I told you. I tried to tell you wouldn't listen. Amen. Because there is coming a time in the moment in the twinkling of the eye. Two will be to get working together. One taking one left. Two will be in the bed. One taking one left. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want to be that one left. We think there's things going on in the world today. I don't know about you. I don't want to be here without his presence or his spirit. See, his spirit is still upon this world today. It's not been taken. It's not been lifted. So right now, we got grace and we have mercy. The Bible declares in the end days that, that the enemy will have a thousand-year reign. I don't, know, I don't want to be here. I mean, I know we call some other people the devil and all that. They're not the devil. You have not seen the havoc that he wants to place in each one of our lives. The heartaches, the heartbreaks, the destruction that he wants to cause each one of us. He has one purpose. And John 10, 10, we'll talk about it here in a minute, that he come to kill, steal, and destroy. And he wants to destroy us. Listen, I, I, I got to say it this way. You had your chance. 
but not today, devil. No, you done told me too late now. I know who my way maker is and who my redeemer is and, and whom I trust and whom I, I, but listen, you can't trust in no one but him. He is our way. And as I was praying, God gave me a, a, a hard message. It's an old message. Y'all going to think I'm an old-fashioned preacher when I leave today, but that's okay. Listen to me a little, little something. The word, don't ever hate repetition. There's none of you in here that will leave and take more than 6% of what I say away here today. That's statistics. That's most people only comprehend 6% of what you say. So I, I, I'm going to place something down in each one of you today. Because God deposited in me this morning. And that's Psalms 103. And it's one of my, one of my Psalms that I, that I can always go back to. Have you ever been tired? How many in this place? I feel like our country is tired. I feel like our people are tired. I know the Apostle Paul says, don't grow weary in well-doing in due season. If you will not faint, you shall reap a harvest. Amen. It don't matter if my harvest is on the other side. I want my harvest. And somebody say it with me. I want my harvest. Amen. Woo. I want my harvest, Lord. I, I, I've worked and I've I've toiled and, 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 and I've hung on to you and I, I have built my faith and I, and I kept, as Romans 10, 17 says, kept faith coming in by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And I've done everything I know to do, God. I'm hanging on to you and I'm trusting you. Even when I see this world falling apart, I know who you are. I want my harvest. Look at your neighbor and say, I want my harvest. I, I want my harvest. What is my harvest? I want my family saved. I want my family healed. I want my family with nothing broken, nothing missing. W what I want is peace. W my harvest is joy, contentment. It's not a bigger house. It's not a bigger car. It's not a bigger banking account. It's having the contentment to know that one day we will kneel down before a holy God and worship all eternity. That is my harvest. Psalms 103 and 1 says a psalm of David. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Everything that is within me. You, how many in here, you get around certain people that kind of make you, make you kind of reserve and share in your, your faith with somebody? Come on, let's be honest. I, I have them too. And they, they kind of make it hard for you, difficult, amen? They kind of want to mock you a little bit, right? And, and kind of look at you a little funny. Well, oh, you one of them. <laughs> That's okay. And all that is within me, bless your holy name. Verse 2 says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. How many is all? All is all. Forget not all his benefits. If he came, if Jesus came just to die so I could make heaven my home, he did way more than I would ever be able to repay him for. Way more than I ever deserved. But forget not all his benefits. I would have to say if you took a job at Miller or at Procter & Gamble or, or one of these places, the first thing you would want to know is, let me see your benefit package. I get all these holiday pay. I get this kind of insurance. Woo. I got this kind of retirement. Hallelujah. Woo. And I'm going to be nice to my Procter & Gamble Miller workers here today. I mean, I'm going to get paid even when I go to the bathroom. 
I'm being nice. And I think I'll sign up for this benefit package. Even though after you're there for several years, can I be honest with you, there's times I'm sure for those that are sitting in here that's retired from there have thought in their mind, I think I've had enough of this place. I'm done. I'm going to quit. Then they get in their car and they're riding home. And they get to thinking about the benefits. Let me think this over again. That's what Paul is saying. When you're tired, when you're weary, don't faint. In due season, you will reap a harvest. If you shall not faint, if you'll rethink this thing again. And that's why the psalmist says, and forget not his benefits. What is his benefits? I am so glad you ask. It's more than just heaven and walking streets of gold, walking through gates of pearl. It's more than being in, in a place where there's no more shame, no more pain, and no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more sadness. So much more than that. Jesus didn't just die so we can have our pie in the sky. He died so we can have it here on the ground while we're around. His benefits are so much more than that. So much more than that. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's our way maker. He's a door opener. He, he's a devil stomper. He's a devil stopper. Y'all ain't with me. He'll put back together what you have let get tore down. Uh, uh. He says, and forget not all his benefits. All of his benefits. He sent the Holy Spirit to live in each one of us. He gave us the way where there looks like no way. He gave us the Godhead of the Holy Spirit to give us peace in chaos, joy in destruction. He gave us the Holy Spirit to continue to be able to have the ability to keep having compassion for people that don't have compassion for you. Y'all with me today? Anybody tracking with me today? Come on. If you're tracking today, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And, and forget not all his benefits. I'll, I'll get back to them in a minute. In verse 3, he says, and who forgives all. How many? All your iniquities. Who heals all your disease. Mm -mm -mm. He who forgives you of all your iniquities. How many in here is he forgiven a lot? Come on, I mean, be honest with you today. Don't even worry about the one looking at you. How many in here is, you, is he forgiving you of a lot that you don't even really want other people to know? Amen. He's forgiven you. Matter of fact, he had to forgive you for last night. Or even on the way to church. I ain't ever, I, I kid you not, I, and I always, and I will always drive myself by myself to church on Sunday mornings. I learned something early. Man, when I was an elder at our church, man, I didn't have no fights until Sunday morning. Trying to get to the house of God. The enemy will jump up in the vehicle with you. And they might be, they look like your children, but they ain't. That's the enemy. All of a sudden, there's all kind of chaos going on. You better shut up back there. Boy, you know what you want to backhand one of them. Y'all ain't with me. But he forgives you all of your iniquity. Who heals all. Somebody say all. Because I'm going to mess you up right here because this is a Hebrew word. This is a word that has got so much richness to it that we can't, they can't even decipher it into English. Heal all your disease. Amen. So now we're thinking cancer, bronchitis, diabetes, 
congestive heart failure. We're, we're thinking of those things, and that's not what he said here. He said anything, he heals all of your disease, anything that diseases you. Anything that diseases you. It means anything that diseases you. He's your healer. That's a benefit for you to sign up for right there. And everybody said, uh huh, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all of your dis ease. That's even that old boss you can't get along with. And the church said, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness. And tender mercies. And this is what God spoke to me about this morning. He said, you know, I believe my people are just getting tired and they're forgetting my benefits. They haven't opened up the benefit package lately. It's called the Word of God, by the way. You, you, you haven't opened up the, the benefit package and read the fine line, the fine print. You got to get down in there and then you realize all the things that he has done. He has, he has, he has taught us how to have love and kindness. Man, our world needs some love and it needs some kindness. Our world needs some love and it needs some kindness. And the church said, and he crowns you. Hmm. With tender mercy. I don't know about you. I, I thank God for his mercy. You know, some people, uh, you know, well, you're the preacher. I know you don't mess up. I got up and put my pants on just like you did, one leg at a time. I'm walking out this salvation just like you are. My mind thinks things it shouldn't think. Come on. And if I ain't careful, my mouth will say things I shouldn't say. Y'all ain't with me today. Now, I'm being honest. I'm being real. But thank God for his kindness and his mercy that he has crowned me with the ability and he has redeemed me from the sins of this world. And everybody said, amen. And he redeems your life from destruction. That's where I wanted to get today. America, God's people are self-destructing, self-destructing. Hear me this morning. Hear the cry of God for his children this morning. Understand that John 10.10 10 says, But the thief come but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Abundantly, Zoe life, overflowing life. I come to give my people overflowing life. See, we are not look like the world. We shouldn't act like the world. We should not walk around with a frown on our face like the world. We ought to be walking in peace. We ought to be walking in joy, unspeakable. I know you're going through something. How are you making it? It's that thing inside me that causes me to go through it. Who redeems your life? From destruction. How many would be real with me today? How many times have you said something that you wish you could take back? How many has ever done something you wish you could take back? I'm talking about after you were saved. I ain't talking about before you were saved. I'm talking about after you were saved that you said something. Matter of fact, it might have been yesterday. You done some things or you said some things that you wish you could just take back, but you can't take it back once you get it out. And the church said, Amen. We have self-destructed. Now I'm going to talk to my faith believers. Do I got any faith walkers up in here that have to walk by faith, not by sight, and walk by the Word of God, not by how I feel or, or how things are going today? Listen, we got to be careful. The Bible says that life and death proceed out of the tongue, out of the mouth. And, and, and listen, we have the ability to speak life or speak death. That is, uh, that's a benefit that he gave us. Also, it's a cursing as well. Because a lot of times we'll curse what God has already blessed. We keep self-destructing by what we let come out. Uh, I love this, but he redeems us from that. 
I like to call it my spiritual roundup. Putting it on my seed that I'm spewing that, that I didn't really mean. I remember planting some grass here a while back, and I had my little spreader thing. See, I, I can't afford one of them to go behind my tractor, so I had to right here with a hand. You know, this gets the whole gets. Tired. And I put seed where I didn't want seed. I had grass growing up through my rocks. Y'all, y'all with me? We, we got stuff growing up in places we shouldn't have it growing up. We got, mm, we got hatred growing. Y'all ain't with me today. Then he doesn't finish. He didn't stop there. But in verse 5, he says, who satisfies your mouth with good things? Somebody say good things. With good things. God's people should be speaking good not evil. And I'm going to say this now. It might offend you. Don't let it offend you. Let it affect you. God's people shouldn't be putting all this trash on Facebook, spewing hatred, spewing death, spewing destruction, spewing disputes, spewing hatred for one another. God's people ought to be Spewing life and life more abundantly at all times. Some of y'all ain't y'all ain't shouting now. Uh, we, ain't, we ain't shouting now because because see now we 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 just God just convicted us and and you know it's real simple as the children of God. It's real simple. The Holy Spirit will tell you. I, I mean, I see some stuff I want to share so bad. I even want to call their name out. Hey, you, did you see this? Mm, this is for you. Y'all with me? I, I'm the only one. I'm the only one in here to see something and go, oh, Julie needs to see this today. This is for you, Julie Allen. Dink, kink. Send it to her and call her out in front of everybody. That's the sin nature in all of us. Can I tell you the, the saved nature? Is that life or life more abundantly? Or is that kill, steal, and destroy? He made it simple for us. I, I love it when people say, how do you know you're hearing from God? He made that real simple for us. If it's only kill, steal, and destroy side, it's not God. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not God. Uh-uh. He said in verse 5, who satisfies your mouth with good things. Yeah, I'm going to stay right there a minute. I ain't. That means you ought to have good words to say to your spouse. You ought to have good words to say to your children. You ought to have good words to say to those that are around you every day. He ought to fill your mouth with goodness. That's one thing I miss about my Dorothy. She found the good in everything. In everything, she found the good. I'm living proof. She found good in me. Y'all will get that every time you get home. <laughs> she found good. It didn't matter what was going on. The true example of what God intended his believers to do is to find the good, not the evil. Not the bad. And the church said. And then he gives us a promise so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I love that he uses the eagles as, as an example through the Bible. I don't have time to go through that today, but I will one day. In verse 6, he says, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all. For all. Somebody say all. For justice for all who are oppressed. Can I tell you something? If you're going to take 6% out today, I'm going to give you the 6% right now. Let him be your judge and your jury. I said let him be your judge and your jury. He executes righteousness. He executes righteousness and justice for all. 
For all. If that means for all, that means the ain'ts and the saints. Amen? All. See, see, sometimes we think that, oh, they're getting away with it. No, there's coming a day, baby. You're going to stand before a holy God that is a righteous judge that can't be bought off, doesn't have a political party, doesn't have an agenda, but a judge that will rightly divide the truth. And everybody said, then we jump over to Psalms 107. How, how do we do this, Pastor? How, how do we do this? I, I, I mean, I don't know about you. I want to sign up for his benefits. I, I want to sign up for his How many in here wants his benefits? Oh, I'll fix it to give you some here in a minute. Psalms 107, verse 20. He sent his word, and we still, we still in the Hebrew, not the Greek. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word. How do I know the purpose God has for me? It's in his word. What is it that God has for me? It's in his word. See, you can't separate God from his word because his word is him. He is his word. For in the beginning, God was with him. And he became flesh, he became man, and he became the word of God. He sent his word to heal their disease. He sent his word to heal them from self-destruction. He sent his word to heal our land. He sent his word to save our family. He sent his word to manifest himself in our life. He sent his, somebody says he sent his word. He sent his word named Jesus. Came, zipped himself up in the form of a man, dwelt amongst us, left deity and all of heaven to come down here to die in our stead. So that we can have an abundant life. What my, that's the God I'm going to serve. I ain't talking about one that got down here and said, Ooh, Lord, these people don't even like me. Them ones that you sent with me, Lord, they won't even stay awake while I'm praying. Them, the one that turned their back on me. Denied me. No, no. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And the church said, Amen. I, I need, uh, this is not in notes today, but I, I got a feeling that somebody needs to hear this. If you're in self destruction mode, he sent his word to heal you, to heal you. Well, see, we in church, so we, we come to church, we, we got to put on a church face now. We can't let nobody know we might have some baggage going on. We, we put on a mask so everybody think we're blessed and highly favored and anointed child of the most high God. I'm above and not beneath and I'm more than a conqueror and everything I put my hands to shall prosper everywhere I put the soles of my feet. I have power and dominion for by his stripes I am healed. I, mean, I can just quote them scriptures, boy. Just keep, keep, keep I, I got it all going on and all hell be breaking loose on the inside and all kind of stuff going on and our mind is distracted by the enemy and, and every, life itself is throwing its curveballs. Can I tell you something? He sent his word. I thank God for Mark that he healed me from self-destruction. Ah, nobody sets out to self-destruct. Nobody. But then you get up in your, up in your 40s anyway. I'll leave it at that. You get up in your 40s and you realize one day you go, wow, I'm not as far along in life that I thought I should be. Then we start looking at our failures, our bad mistakes, 
our bad decisions, the company that we've kept. We start looking at these. Can I tell you something? The Holy Spirit was sent to be our healer, to be our comforter, to be our guide, to direct us into life. Amen? That's his benefit. Somebody say a benefit to abundant life. Amen? Somebody say abundant life. See, see, see my desire is not just a pastor, just a church but an abundant church, uh, abundant living, not just talk about it, but walking in it. Amen. I, I need us not to just talk about the life that Jesus died for, but be able to walk in that. And the church said, amen. Woo. And in order to, to walk in that abundant life, there has to be a lot of dying to self. And everybody said, how many wants abundant life? See, see, abundant life, watch, y'all. Abundant life is not just having a bigger banking account. Abundant life is not just having your way. I said a mouthful right there. I'm, I'm sure preaching better than you amen right now. Life is not just getting your way. Abundant life is not living on a mountaintop 24-7. Abundant life is living the life that Jesus died for, making good quality decisions, walking in peace, walking in love, walking with joy. I'm at an age now, I'm like the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul said, look, hey, pursue peace. I pursue peace. I went and put a gate on my driveway so I can pursue peace. Peace. And if that heathen dog of mine don't get rid of his girlfriend from next door, he's fixing to be out too. Amen. He wait, he woke me up this morning, three lay up under the camper beating everything this morning. And that ain't peace. Y'all ain't with me today. I pursue peace. Somebody say, pursue peace. Mm. See, it's one thing to know that you're saved and going to heaven when you die. How many in here are saved? Ready to you ready right now? Can I tell you something? This is what he told us about these end days. Be packed up, prayed up, studied up, and ready to go up. Because there's coming a day in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. When is that? Amen. But see, Jesus didn't just come so we can have our pie in the sky. He came so that we can have peace and we can live a joyful life through this journey that we're on. We're all going through a journey trying to get to the same place, serving the same God. There's many gods, but we're only, listen, y'all, we, we serve, let me tell you who we serve here. We serve Jehovah. I remember the first time when I, after I got saved, I heard a preacher say that, and I said, oh, I can't listen to them, them Jehovah Witnesses over there. And uh, we ser serve Jehovah God. We serve Elohim, the creator of all things. Y'all with me today? We, we serve the God of creation that created you and me. We, we, we serve the God that stepped out on nothing and called everything we see into existence. He said, light be, light was. That's the God that we serve. The God that we serve will take, no matter what your mistakes are in life, uh, the God that we serve will pick you up, dust you off, and use you mighty in his kingdom. Amen. Jesus came so that we may be in, able to enjoy this journey that we're on. He doesn't want his children broke, busting, disgusted, mad, fighting, carrying on. And everybody said, the writer of Hebrews, Hebrews 1 and verse 9, he penned these words here. He said, um, thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, somebody say therefore, God, even thy God, the one we just talked about, hath anointed thee. Y'all ready for this now? Once you get this word right here, you can't turn from it. He says, even thy God hath anointed you. Put your name right there. Scratch it out of your Bible. Put your name right there. Well, I can't take us take it away from the Bible. No, this is personal. Anointed you with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So why are we not walking in joy when he has anointed us to walk in joy? Y'all with me? 
I got quiet now. Y'all hear them crickets? It got quiet now. Somebody say he anointed. He anointed me with the oil of gladness, the oil of joy. He has anointed me. What does anointed mean? I, I need you to break that down for me, preacher, and I'm glad you asked today. Anointed means it went past the surface. It went right on down through the skin cells, right on down into your very fiber, right on down into your core. It just go all the way down, and all of a sudden things change, and you don't know why. Uh, all of a sudden you, you ain't getting mad like you used to. And things that used to just irk you won't irk you no more. Mm, y'all with me today. Mm -mm -mm. See, see, you've been supernaturally anointed to live a life in a natural way full of joy. That means you can walk in peace, walk in joy when they're talking about you, when they're walking out on you, when they're hurting you. Y'all y'all with me today? Y'all tracking with even when they don't like you and you know they don't like you. Have you ever been in those places and that's time when you've walked in you know there's some people in there that don't really like you. They've been talking about you. They don't know you've been talking. Did you know that they've been talking about you? But they've been talking about you anyway. If you ain't, become a pastor. And you walk up in that room with all the haters. And the first thing you do Hey, how you been? When the old one would say, hey, you, we need to talk outside for a minute. Y'all with me? Walking in a natural way full of joy. Man, he's anointed us to walk in joy. And this was the thing that I'm like, God, I, I, I don't know how to get this across. I understand it. I've lived it. I under now, listen, there's times that I, I don't let the enemy get me much. But every once in a while, for moments, he gets my happiness. But he's never stole my joy. He's got my happiness before because I gave it to him. And God had to remind me this morning. How do I describe this to somebody else? And how do you know, how, do you, how many of you know, he only goes to his word to show you anything. He said, this joy that you have, the world didn't give it to you. They can't take it away. This joy that you have, your circumstance didn't give it to you. Your money didn't give it to you. Your status didn't give it to you. Your children didn't give it to you. Your spouse didn't give it to you. Your boss didn't give it to you. Your education didn't give it to you. Everything that you have didn't give it to you. This joy that you have that the Lord has given, the world can't take away. It's a joy unspeakable. Speakable. It's a joy that they'll rise up in the midst of a storm when everybody around you is going crazy. Am I the only one? See, it's the Holy Ghost in you that'll stir that joy up in you. Man, my children will attest. Over the last 20 years, there's been a lot of change in Daddy. What used to would make him mad, he laughs at now. I wish he would have learned this when we were little. See? I wish he had learned this when we were little. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to leave it alone. Mm. John 15 and 9. I, I want to give you some encouragement before we leave here today. In verse 9, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. He sent his word to heal our disease. Here's his word. Even as the Father loved me, I loved you. But now, even greater than that, 
Continue in my love. Don't just hear the words. Continue in my love. Walk in my love. React in my love. Y'all with me? And he says in verse 10, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and I abided in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Y'all hear me. Love is, listen, your faith doesn't work without love. The Bible says your, your faith is the axis of all of God's blessings. Your, mm. But pastor, you don't know how they treat me. You don't know what they've done to me. Life is unfair. They hurt me. They walked out on me. They abused me. They used me, and they, they threw me to the side, and then they talk about me, and every time they get a chance, they stab me in the back. Jesus would step up on that cross in on Golgotha, and he'd look out over the Kenron Valley, and he'd look at each one of us and say, look what they did to me, but I loved you anyway. I loved them anyway. I kept loving even when I was hurting. I kept loving even when I was dying. I kept loving anyway. I loved them in spite of. Y'all with me today? He said, because of that. Now, your joy, man, when you can walk in love, you don't have to agree with everybody. I don't even have to like you, but I love you. Man, I don't know. I can't love them people. Huh. No, I can't love them. I imagine when Jesus was hanging on the cross, Naked, y'all. Not with a towel on. Naked in front of his own mama. With his beard ripped out. Bruised, bloody. To, he couldn't even un recognize who he was. Having to push up to get a breath. And come back down and they're mocking him and they're making fun of him. The king of Jews, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Where is your God now? Jesus, being deity, could have called down a legion of angels and destroyed every one of them. But instead of, in spite of, he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Look, I love to my last breath. I'm going to love in spite of. I'm going to love even when they persecute me. I'm going to. Somebody needs to go and praise him. And say, so some of you ain't getting this. If you're going to leave here today with your 6%, take love with you when you go. If you'll take love with you, go. Joy unspeakable will rise up. Because, see, I don't owe no man but to love them. No man. I owe them nothing but to love them. Because that's what the Word of God tells me. And if we'll walk in love, there'll be joy. Man, what, what a great place this country would be if we learned to walk in love. Can I even give you one better than that? What a great church we would have if everybody just walked in love. What about a great community we would have if everybody just walked in love? What, what, how I even, let's even get a little personal here. How much greater would our homes be if we just walked in love? Somebody say, take love with you. Take love with you. You need to take a dose of love with you today. Don't leave here without love. Because, see, the Bible declares. Somebody say, the Bible declares. Not the pastor. The Bible says, he that loveth not knoweth not 
God, for God is love. You can't separate love from God, and you can't separate God from love. So if you're taking anything out of here, take love with you because love is God. And if you're taking God out the door with you, you got to take love with him. Hey, you can't separate. I'll take God, but I don't like you because you Methodist. I don't like you because you Pentecostal. I don't like you because you're Baptist. I don't like you because you black. I don't like you because you white. I don't like you because you're a Mexican. I don't like you because you don't look like me. I don't like you because you don't drive what I drive. No, he says take love with me and you'll love everybody. It won't matter no more. Because Jesus loved in spite of. In spite of. Then our little thin skin would thicken up. Y'all with me? Oh, we don't like this kind of stuff, do we? Then our little personal feelings would kind of shed. We wouldn't be so touchy. I tell you all the time, it don't, it don't good, be good to be around me and think I'm going to walk on eggshells. I'm clumsy. I will step on them. I will break them. I don't know how to walk around eggshells. I don't. How many knows touchy people like that? Man, you got to watch what you say. <sighs> you got to do just what they want you to do. You got to be their puppet. Say what they want to hear. Act the way you want, they want you to hear. Act. Can I tell you something? Look at your neighbor and say, walk in love. No, no, no. Say it like you really mean it. Walk in love. Take love out today. Take, let's take love out today when we leave. Let's take love into a dying and desolate world that is in need of a Savior. And let the world out there know us in here or of him up there by the love we show one to another. Amen. That's how. That's how we win a community. That's how we win a city. That's how we win a state. That's how we win a country. By showing love to one another. It's okay that you don't look like me or you don't act like me or think like me. Ooh, Jesus, this would be a boring world if you all thought like I thought. I can promise you. And the church said, amen. Some of y'all go, mm -hmm, yep. Hallelujah. I want everyone, if you will, stand to your feet today. I, I, I want us to leave here with our 6% filled to overflowing with love. And forget not his benefits. His benefit is joy, peace. If you're here today with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to pray with you today. But if you're here today and you say, I need more peace, if that's you, raise your hand. Pastor, when you're praying this morning, pray for me. I need more peace. I need peace, Lord. I need peace. I, I need more peace. I need more joy. I need to know how to walk in love better. I need to know how to have a love walk that, is, that represents my Savior. If that's you, just raise your hands to heaven this morning. I want to pray this prayer with you. Father, we stand before you today. And we say thank you. Thank you for the works of the cross. We thank you that your son left heaven, came to this miserable world, and became man and died for our stead. Forgive us for where we have forgotten your benefits. But most of all, we leave here today. Father, we ask that you fill us to overflowing with love. And as we get in the car to drive out of here and the devil tries to get in, we'll stop and kick the door open and tell him, not today, devil. Get out in Jesus' name. Get out, get out, get out, get out. We will pursue peace. We will pursue joy. We will pursue happiness. We will pursue love. And today, as a body of believers, we come together, touch and agree for the power of the Holy Spirit to overflow us with your love. And if that's you today, say amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I love you. I will see you Wednesday night online. I want y'all to give it up for our praise team, y'all.